Hi, I'm Pastor Jess Horsley. Again, welcome back to week two of our Prince of Egypt sermon series, the Grow Group uh, experience. We are glad that you are taking part. Uh, Again, I am uh, glad and excited to welcome members of the Guardians of the Galaxy 316 Grow Group. They meet every uh, Sunday at 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. in room 254. Um, You are uh, welcome and if you are interested to join them and their Grow Group. Uh, So please introduce yourselves. Hello, I'm Beth. Beth, hi. Hello, I'm Solomon. And Marianne. Excellent. Well, we are excited to be sharing with you again this week too. This week we are talking about the defining moments for Moses as a prince of Egypt. Uh, And an opening question here is we want to ask like, what's a a defining moment or two in your life? um, And what did it mean or how did it change your life? I think for me, it was uh, being a mom, becoming a mom, um, and being God-led to stay at home Mm -hmm. and not go um, pursue my career. That uh, that really defined who I am, and I was very um, methodical and controlling. Like, I had a set way I wanted to do things, and God kind of like was like, ha, 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 just kidding. Mm -hmm. And it has forced me to uh, take a step back and um, be less... Um, organized and controlling in a way. So, um, I mean, what, what what's the, the saying? Like, people make plans and God laughs. Um, I, I think that's very true. You know. Yeah. So, for me, that was that was that was mine. Thank you. For me, it's more okay. I was born in the church, grew up in the church. That doesn't mean that in my life I haven't gone off the church and come back to the church, how do we say, Um, received him, pushed him away, received him again. So for me, I will say my real defining moment was actually experiencing Christ in reality. And not so long ago, maybe about eight years ago or something, and it was just an experience. It was, I would say it's a dream, but it was more than a dream. It just showed me the love of God. And amazingly, it's in this story we are all about Moses. It was actually um, chapter Exodus 34, when Moses says, show me your presence. I want to see you. That was it for me. I saw the love of God and it keeps me true daily. So I go through stressful situations and I remember God loves me. He's merciful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think it's interesting that our, uh, in the Prince of Egypt, we see this, one of the defining moments for Moses is this literal come to God moment where this bush is on fire but not consumed and it it is the personal Marianne as you said it's the personal experience Mm -hmm. of God in a way that's undefined except for outside it's undefinable outside itself Mm -hmm. and and so Moses discovers holy ground in the middle of nowhere he's tending sheep and he sees this bush that's consumed by fire that's not consumed by fire but it's on fire and and so a question we might consider today is where might we today discover holy ground? And what do you think makes a place or a space holy? I will say it's your experience of God. Yeah. And um, he, he appears to every one of us differently. And I think, um, like I said, for myself, I, That wasn't my only experience of God, but that was a defining moment for me. So every time I go through a stressful period now, I remember that presence. I remember that, what he showed me. And I know that I am good. I'm just going to come out of this. It gives me a different view of life. I am good because he loves me. I don't deserve it, but he loves me. 
It's it's the hope message. I th- I so think, yeah. I think that's the holy ground. Oh. When you experience that presence, you feel that holiness. It's not of you, but it's him. Yeah. He, it's, it's just beautiful. It can't be described. And I think it's something we should all yearn for yeah. because I've experienced him in other ways. But, you know, there are these little things that I see, and I just see the beauty of God again. It reminds me of how beautiful my God is. And I wish everyone would go through that experience, really. I like what you said, how you felt kind of alone, and you were at a crossroads in your life. And I think that so many times in life, that's where God, if we allow it, you can hear him when you are down and out and you are not focused on yourself is I had a moment um, I was going through, I was in my early twenties and I was going through a bad breakup and I was just totally broken and I was in sleeping. And I remember hearing the name James, James. And I was, I woke up, I was like, what, why, what are you trying to say to me? God, what, what is, and I knew it was God. I knew he was saying James, James, James. And I called my mom and I said, mom, I feel like God keeps saying the name James. And she knew I would like cry myself to sleep and all the things. And she goes, yeah, I know what God's saying. There's a book in the Bible called James and you need to read it. And I was like, I do. <laughs> and I read it and she was right. And it's all about going through something and how God is there to like strengthen you and make you a better person. And I, every, any, anytime I feel doubt, I remember that it's like my burning bush moment. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. God is real. Like I, I, it just gives me such peace. And I know that just like you, that he is there with me. He's with, there with me through everything. So, yeah. Thank you. And I think um, to experience it, we have to be intentional seeking his face. You have to really be intentional. You have to have reached that point where you say to God, it's only you. It's all you. <laughs> Do something, yeah. and then it comes. Moses took that time to look. Let me go see. Why isn't it? Right. We have to be intentional. You can't do it without it. Yeah. There's a, there's a, it's something interesting to consider. Imagine if Moses had said, oh, look, there's a bush on fire, but I got sheep to worry about. Exactly. Yeah. I got other things. I have I problems to go solve. He wasn't curious. He'd right. Right. Imagine if he hadn't been curious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But instead he shows the curiosity and he says, I need to check this out because something's not right. He didn't worry about right. his to-do list. He right. went. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, one of the things that we uh, that, that Moses celebrates that uh, is a part of the Prince of Egypt story that Jewish people today celebrate, that Jesus himself celebrated, uh, is the Passover meal. And so here before us, we have a, set, a Seder meal um, to represent different elements of the experience of the Hebrew people um, in Egypt. Uh, so a few things to consider. There's a shank bone here, or the zeora, the paschal lamb offering that's made by the Hebrew people. The boiled egg uh, is a mourner's food, but also represents the cycle of life. The bitter herbs, a maror, uh, is the bitterness of slavery, here represented by... Um, Horseradish. Oh, right. 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 yeah. oh, I don't know how you can forget this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's a vegetable. The vegetable is carpus, uh, here represented by celery, but it is dipped in salt water um, as a representation of the tears of the Hebrew people uh, as they were enslaved. Uh, and then there's a sweet paste here. It's called horoset, and it's the clay. It represents the clay that was used by the Hebrew people during their enslavement to make uh, bricks. Um, and that Pharaoh actually removed or took away straw, and so they were forced to make the bricks uh, out of only clay. And so there's a sweet paste. Um, And so each and every one of these have a a significant meaning. Uh, A question that we might consider today is, is there a meal or a food that has a significant meaning to you um, and your family or, or in your personal life? Communion. Yeah. Say, say more about that, Solomon. Um, sometimes, you know, when um, we worship, even at home, we want to break bread. Mm. You know, 
since we do that in church all the time, sometimes too, as a family, we also want to do that. It's pretty important too, as an obedience to what Christ told us to do while he was living this earth, that we shall always do that in, rem in remembrance of, 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 of him. Yeah. yeah. That's the beautiful words of the liturgy is do this in remembrance of me. And it, it's, I think it's always amazing that we consider how Jesus took something as simple as just bread that we have, every, most of us probably consume it every day. And yet uh, Jesus makes it divine um, and helps us to find the divinity in the common, in the ordinary. I like the representation, like everything means something. Yeah. So it reminds me to like slow down, like don't just yeah. rah, 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 get my nourishment. Like this is from God. And, yeah. and um, for us as a family, we just made it up. We do a New Year's meal and yeah. it's everything is very significant, it has a meaning. Like we have the scalloped potatoes and it's representative of comfort. We want comfort this uh -huh. year. And then we have ham because it's for your health. And we have, I'm Irish, so we do uh, black eyed peas and uh -huh. luck. We always have to have luck. And then uh -huh. the last thing is um, spinach. Uh -huh. And it's supposed to represent um, provisions and, and money and all that stuff. Uh -huh. So. My kids love it, and we just made it up on the fly. But I love this because it became meaningful and um, significant to part of their culture, and I, I love that. I love that. We have a Sunday meal. It has to have rice. Uh huh. Oh. Uh huh. It has to have rice. In fact, my kids come visiting now. They expect to see that's something Nigerians do. It's called jollof rice, or Africans do, actually. It's called jollof rice. It's made from rice. So they come in, they expect, Mommy, we want to eat your jollof rice. Uh -huh. So it has to be made. That's a special meal for them. Yeah, it's yours. I mean, that, that's the thing. Again, there's a beauty to its home. Yeah, there's, a, there's such a ritual and a tradition to food. Um, our takeaway this week is that much of life is made up of these uneventful day-to-day -day rhythms and these uh, habits that shape our lives, the ordinary things, right? Um, and yet every once in a while, we experience a defining moment one in which our choices will drastically affect not only our own lives, but the people around us. And so might you, like Moses, uh, consider what those defining moments are as we seek to better recognize how God is alive and at work in and through our lives. We'll look forward to seeing you next week for our third week. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, supporting actors, the different uh, people that supported and surrounded Moses in his journey to become the prince of Egypt. We'll see you then.